morning, everybody. My name is Phil Green, and welcome. You're in track four, and indeed room four, where this morning we're going to be hearing about that holiest of holy grails, the evaluation of learning and development. How do I know if it's been any good, if it's made any contribution? I'm very privileged to be your chair, and I'm going to be introducing to you Kevin Streeter, who's Executive Director, IT and Telecoms from the Open University. Kevin Streeter joined the Open University in September 2009 as Executive Director, Employer Engagement, IT and Telecoms. Prior to that, he spent 18 years in various service delivery, project management, and training leadership roles at Sun Microsystems, the final position being UK and Ireland Customer Learning Manager, Kevin Streeter. Thank you very much. So good morning, welcome to the, the learning evaluation session. And uh, it's very good to be standing at the front because I think I've sat in the audience for this session now, I think for every year bar one that Learning Technologies has been running, listening to the subject of evaluation. So uh, it's now my turn to stand at the front and uh, try and show you how you can actually put evaluation into practice. So very briefly, the Open University, uh, I hope you all know, is the uh, largest university in Europe and uh, we're one of the, the major partners with people like Apple on providing free university content uh, through a whole range of devices. But the particular part of the university that I work in uh, is very much looking at the corporate learning workplace and uh, how we assist large organizations in really bringing in university level skills to their organizations. So in this session, I'm gonna talk very briefly about how you can actually bring evaluation into practice um, in your workplace learning and show you how we actually do this for our corporate clients. So, key objectives for the session. Hopefully I'm gonna give you an overview about how uh, embedding learning in the workplace can really boost impact. Uh, because at the end of the day, learning in a corporate context is about providing some sort of benefit to the business. And we need to be able to show what that benefit is and how we've achieved it. I also want to look at um, what the Kirkpatricks have been saying. Uh, I think I've, I've stood in this room for many years, listening to many criticisms of different levels of evaluation. But what we've been doing at the university is looking at what is it they were really saying right the way back in the 50s and how does that apply today? to evaluation practice. Um, and most importantly, we're gonna have a look at the return on evaluation model, uh, uh, sorry, the return on uh, expectations model. So we can really see how evaluation can be put in practice uh, today. But first of all, uh, what's the value of learning? Well, if you want to understand what the value of learning is, you, you need to undertake some form of evaluation. So you need to know what is it that you're gaining from this learning intervention. The real challenge is to understand how you do that evaluation. It's the, the how question. So we know we want to evaluate it, we know we need to understand the value to the business, but how do we go about doing that? So there's a really helpful definition from Janet Shapiro. It says evaluation is the comparison of actual project impacts against the agreed strategic plans. So you've got to understand what the strategic intention is of the learning intervention before you can evaluate it. And I think coming from the world of, of IT training, a lot, is hap a lot happens without really understanding what the benefit to the business is and then trying to retrofit an evaluation to justify what you've just done. So it's important to understand what is it that the learning really is adding to the business. So what are some of the strategic objectives that our customers have? Well, huge range of things. Um, they might want to look at retention um, they might want to develop a more confident and competent workforce. Uh, they might want to improve their customer service and their qualities uh, to learn new skills, 
develop their workforce to be more professional, to grow leaders. These are all things that could come up from within the business. Now, these actually matter to the business because at the end of the day, these are the things that will actually help the business move forward and you can show some value has been added to the bottom line. So some of these can be measured in, in very finite ways, but actually a lot of them uh, are very qualitative. And things like return on investment is looking for a percentage figure or a financial figure, which is interesting, but actually is it the measure that you actually need to, to track? It may be a qualitative measure because actually developing a more professional workforce may be really important to your business. But actually, how do you measure that in terms of just a, a number? So you need to have different ways of understanding what the value is that the learning is bringing uh, to the organization. So the general outcomes can actually be very important. And we need to make sure we capture these as you're going through the process of understanding what learning uh, you're going to put into place. So if you look at some of the, the work around um, that Jack Phillips has done, it, one of the things that's missed out is looking at the environment in which the learning takes place. And actually, it's not just about the strategic objectives. It's not just about the content of the learning. You need to be very cognizant of actually the environment people are in, the support their team's giving them, the support their line managers are giving them. Uh, so all of these are possible factors that could be evaluated through the learning program. And all of this is very much reflecting the way that the Open University works, where a lot of our teaching is very reflective, and then you put it into practice in the workplace. So there's a lot of work-based assignments. And that's how we can assess the value that's being achieved through the learning. So some of the other things uh, that can be asked. So what else might customers want to know? Well, all sorts of different questions may come up. And what you have to do is try and identify which of these are the ones that really will matter to your organization and why it is that you're putting a learning program into place. And you can then start assessing the responses that you're getting uh, from, these, from the evaluation process. And what you've got to try and build up is what is the expectation of the business? Because if you understand the expectations of learning, you've got a much better opportunity of identifying how evaluation can help you and how you can demonstrate the return to the business. So you have to surface the expectations that may be around, and it may be in the line managers, it may be in the strategy of the organization, but what are the things that are really going to be in the indicators uh, of the evaluation uh, process? So let's have a look at uh, Kirkpatrick and what the Kirkpatricks have had to say. Um, it's the Kirkpatrick model's been widely criticized, and I've got to admit, I, I've been one of the people sitting in the room, um, listening to people like Don Clark in the past, who've just gone through Kirkpatrick and said, it's too hard to implement. Um, it doesn't really provide a framework. And actually, since I've moved to the university, I've seen that there are ways that you can actually use the Kirkpatrick model. But it's something that you've actually got to think about right from the beginning of the process of putting learning into place. So you really have to understand what are the expectations and how can Kirkpatrick support what we're trying to do in terms of evaluation because then you can build a learning program that's going to be effective. So let's go back to the original Kirkpatrick philosophy. So we all know the good level one reflect, uh, reactive uh, evaluation model. And having come from the, the world of IT training, that's been taken to an art form where all of the operational methodologies there are have been applied to it. So applying Six Sigma to reactive evaluation uh, 
it becomes the basis upon which the whole training process and the whole learning process is evaluated. A lot of people can see how they can extend that to level two, where you can actually assess the degree that participants have actually gained the skills, the knowledge, the confidence. But even at level two, you're not really explaining what value you've brought back to the business. Uh, it, you're seeing what impact it's had on the individual. You need to take it further to level three and look at the behaviors. So look at the competencies that have been developed, look at how they apply the learning on the job. Uh, but the holy grail in this is level four assessment. Uh, to what degree do the outcomes, have the outcomes been achieved as a result of the learning intervention? And that's always been in the Kirkpatrick model, but I think it's been dismissed as being too hard. And so it's too difficult to implement, so we'll just avoid it and go back to one of the earlier stages uh, that's easier to implement. But what I've seen through the work that the OU's been doing is actually it's not that hard to implement a level four type evaluation. Uh, and actually, a colleague of mine, Viv, who's here in the audience with us, does this on a regular basis. Now, uh, everyone's always said level four is really difficult, can't do it. Well, actually, it's been going on on a regular basis. Uh, so it can't be too difficult to do. So, what are the principles that are in the Kirkpatrick model? Well, the key one is the end is the beginning. Uh, what is it that you are trying to get from your learning? Why are you undertaking some form of learning intervention? Uh, the expectations are essential. What is it the business wants from the learning program? And if you can articulate these, you can engage the stakeholders in the business and they will actually start seeing the value of learning. And I think what I've always seen is it's very difficult to explain why you should spend money on learning. But if you can tie it back to a really specific set of expectations and you do this before you undertake the learning, then there is a good opportunity to actually demonstrate the value you're bringing back. So, document that I suggest you all have a look at, if you haven't, is uh, the Kirkpatrick Four Level Fresh Look. Um, came out in April 2009, and this is one of the key documents. And what we've got in that is the business partnership model. And it starts uh, let's see, over here. You identify the business need, and from that, you can start defining the expectations uh, that you want from the learning intervention. So you start moving through, you identify the behaviours, you identify the specific learning objectives, and then look at the learning environment. Then you can start building your evaluation tools. So right at the beginning, you're building your evaluation tools before you've identified learning outcome, uh, learning objectives and what the expectations are and how you're going to evaluate it then you can develop and deliver the learning program. And until you've got all those early stages in place, how can you know what the right learning program is going to be? And I think that's one of the key things that I've picked up from the university practice is don't go and just create a learning program based on the initial responses, the initial contact you have with the customers in the business or with your external organizations. Make sure you know the expectations, the outcomes, the learning objectives, and then build your program. So you can then get into delivering the program. You can do your initial reactive response. You can see how that's impacted the individual. And then right at the center, this is absolutely critical, you need to initiate the ongoing reinforcement and monitoring you need to make sure the skills are being put in practice and they're put in use and the line managers are supporting people, the teams around the learners are supporting them in putting their learning into practice because 
Only once you've got that support environment in place can you then move on to looking at measuring the behavioural change and the benefits for the business. And quite often, that's, those are some of the stages that are missed. It's not just about delivering a training programme or going through an e-learning programme. You've actually got to provide a whole structure around an individual. You need to make sure the team's supporting them, the line managers support them, because only then will they be able to understand what it is that the business is gaining through the learning programme. What you then get is a whole chain of evidence that can then demonstrate the return on expectations. So you've got your initial reactive response, but you can now see the, the response from the learning to make sure people learn the skills. You can see the behavioral changes and you can demonstrate the benefit back to the business from the learning intervention. So it's that chain of evidence that we need to build up in order to show that learning has had an impact for the organization. So effective learning programs start with understanding what evaluation you want to undertake. And you need to understand that, <coughs> that evaluation before the program starts. And if you've got that in place, you can then give learning designers the right information about what you're trying to achieve from the learning program, the types of behaviors you're trying to achieve, uh, the attitudes, the knowledge, the skills you want to transfer, uh, and to also make sure that you've got a training program that is going to be received positively in the classroom or through the, uh, the online learning environment. So very briefly, just the, the approach that uh, the OU Evaluation Service takes. Uh, to begin with, it's very much focused on undertaking uh, a lot of planning. What is it the organization's trying to achieve? Uh, what are the expectations? Uh, what are the learning goals? Uh, what's the culture of the organization? How's the learning going to be supported? Uh, how are the skills going to be applied once they've been learned? Because until you've got that picture, it's very difficult to decide to design the learning program, and it's also difficult to design the evaluation process that's going to go around it. Then you go through the preparation process. Um, so you define uh, which evaluation methodology is going to be appropriate. And in this, not, you won't always do a level four evaluation in every case. So you, you would always do uh, a level one evaluation, a reactive, the happy sheets. Um, probably 40 to 60% of the time, you'd then come up with a level two evaluation. Level three, in about 30%. And you'd only apply the full level four return on expectations uh, evaluation in about 10 to 20% of the learning programs. What you may end up doing, though, is having a combination of all of those evaluations. Um, and they support each other. So if you want to do level three, you should also do level two and a level one at the same time. Um, you've got to decide which ones are most appropriate for the learning that you're undertaking. But if you really need to show value back to the business, you need to do level four and all the other levels that support it. You can then go through the process of collecting all the relevant data and running workshops, collecting survey data, and collating all the data uh, ready for the analysis phase. And then through the analysis and reporting the findings uh, back to the organization that's undertaken the learning. So the evaluation service is very much a part of the learning design process. And the two need to go together. If you're going to have effective learning, you've got to have effective evaluation, and they need to work very closely together. If you can do that, you can demonstrate real value um, from the learning process. And we use a whole set of theoretical frameworks uh, for the evaluation service, um, a lot of it based on the work of the Kirkpatricks, um, 
a lot from the research of Brinkhoff and Bursin, um, some of our own research from the Open University Business School, all come together to provide a framework for undertaking four-level evaluation. So I'm just going to move on very briefly to sort of a few examples of where have we applied this and what sort of results uh, have we achieved from uh, the evaluation process. So uh, the evaluation service at the university has undertaken uh, around 100 projects uh, since 2002. Uh, and you can see the response rate from the students and the line managers is significant. It, it's a good sample uh, for undertaking the evaluation. And it, we've assessed a whole range of different learning interventions. Uh, they could be core courses, they could be, be uh, bespoke learning programs, uh, anything that's relevant for the corporate context. Um, and a wide range of organisations across public and private sector. So what have we learned from the evaluation service? Well, first of all, um, students tend to be poorly informed about the courses they're signing up for. Uh, now, I'm sure you've seen this in your own practice, but actually making sure that students actually understand what they're coming on the training for, what the learning intervention is all about, uh, and making sure they do know what the course description is and just reinforcing it, and making sure that people like the line managers have reinforced it so the students know what it is they're coming to. The second one is that line managers would benefit from more information about the courses. So quite often if you see an HR organisation providing information about a course, somebody will register for it, uh, the line manager may actually not be aware of the details of the course that the person is going to undertake. So it's really important to make sure that line managers, the people that have direct immediate responsibility for the learners, have a good understanding of the learning that's being undertaken. Uh, and the, train, the benefits need to be emphasised for the line managers so they actually can see the value of the learning and can reinforce it. And this also needs to be undertaken if managers change because one of the, the gaps that can occur is if a change in reporting line happens, the information about the course may disappear the understanding of why a learning programme is in place, particularly in our case where the learning programme may take several months. You need to make sure that understanding of the learning programme and why it's taking place is carried through from one manager to the next. And making sure there's opportunities for the students to use their skills, to make sure they can apply them. And again, that comes down to the line managers and the teams around the individuals, making sure that they can actually they understand the skills that have been developed and they know how those skills can be put into practice and they get the opportunity to practice. Uh, and that students who work for supportive line managers uh, who continually have their learning reinforced once they've undertaken the learning and brought it back into the workplace are the ones that can really show how learning has helped improve their performance. So very briefly, just a, a case study. This is actually a, an evaluation that uh, has been running over the last few months. Um, it's just been concluded. Uh, we've undertaken a, a higher level learning program, so uh, university level learning uh, with a global engineering manufacturer. And what we're looking at is what's the impact been on their organization and how is this tied to their strategic priorities? So, a lot of words on this slide, but what are the things that are important to this organization? What are they looking for from the learning program? Very few of these can actually be quantified in terms of numbers. A lot of them are very qualitative. So, providing staff uh, who aspire to lead a team uh, insights into management theory that's a good thing to evaluate from a learning program. Now, how, it's not something you could easily capture in a number, 
And this is where some of the, the earlier ideas around ROI were being very financially driven, are very difficult to achieve because actually this is what matters to, to this organization. They want to grow their own leaders. They want to encourage staff to stay. This is what we need to get from uh, the learning intervention. But alongside that, they also want to know if the learning is effective. They want to know if the contents are up to date. Um, so some of the things that you might capture in an initial reactive learning survey. So a level one evaluation is still important, uh, but you also want to, you can see elements here of level two evaluation, level three evaluation, level four evaluation. You need to bring them all together in order to have a complete view of the benefit the organization's gonna get from the learning. So some of the figures, um, pre-course information, we were asking students and line managers if they had sufficient information about their studies. And as a result of surveying the students and the line managers, you get an indication of how well uh, they've uh, received the information and that they're ready for the learning program. And that they, you see, they understand their relevance to the role, but things like content and structure, the line managers may need more information uh, on the content of the program. So you're already undertaking some early stage work in evaluation, it, even before the learning commences. Students and student preparation is important. So you need to understand how well the students were prepared for the learning program, um, that they understand how this is gonna be relevant to their work, that they've got the appropriate study skills, uh, and that the time is available to the students. So again, the line managers have quite an impact on the learning process because they're the ones that will make the time available for the learning to take place and for the application to happen. But most importantly, what are the business expectations? And the business expectations in this case, things like gaining an insight into management theory. Um, now, you need to be able to, to understand and to survey and evaluate, has this been achieved? Because this is the real benefit of this particular learning program. So understanding the student's view, the line manager's view, gives you a really good perspective of what is it the business wanted from learning and has it been achieved? So where we can get to at the end is we can provide a summary like this back to the sponsoring organization to say, what was the objective of the program? And we've got the employer objectives, and did we meet these objectives? We're demonstrating now the return on the expectations. So the organization that has commissioned the learning can now see how the learning program has provided a response to the expectations they had. And providing this type of data really is a level, it's a level four evaluation put into practice, we've identified the expectations, and we can now report back to the business the fact that we have achieved, to a certain degree, the expectations they had of the learning program. And from this, we can then show that whole chain of evidence demonstrating the value to the business as a whole of the learning program. So, in summary, the business expectations, as we've measured through the, the return on expectations, need to be determined before the learning solution is devised. And that's really important for any learning program that is undertaken. I think probably the one thing I've picked up over many years in the learning industry is we all skip too quickly into actually putting the learning into place without going through this stage of understanding the expectations the business has. A supportive environment in the workplace actually has a great impact on the effectiveness of the learning. So making sure that the, the team context, the work context, the opportunities to implement the learning in practice has a huge impact on the effectiveness so you really need to think about how that environment's gonna be put in place before you undertake the learning program. And finally, and probably most importantly, line managers 
the direct managers of the learners are the gatekeepers to the effective learning. And without truly engaging line managers in the learning process, then the ability to actually put the learning into practice and gain the benefit the business is expecting uh, is really difficult to achieve. So line managers are the gatekeepers to effective learning. So I hope that's given you an overview of just how we see evaluation uh, coming from a university perspective. But hopefully there's a lot in there that's very relevant uh, to a large number of learning context. Uh, and I hope there's some little gems in there that you can take away for your own practice. Thank you very much.